at least 72 people working at Homeland Security were also on the terror watch list. I mean, did they put them on there because, uh, you know, you stole Melvin's uh, stapler? So he's going to, you know, like the office, uh, office space where he's going to uh, take, uh, take you down because of that. They said back in August, we did an investigation. The inspector general did. Uh, the Department of Homeland Security had 72 individuals on the terror watch list that were actually working at Homeland Security. The former DHS director had to resign because of that, said the congressman. Lynch referred to a recent report that found the TSA, overseen by the DHS, failed to stop 95% of those who attempted to bring restricted items past airport security. There have been other recent studies that have shown that they failed 100% of the time. They completely missed being able to do that. So we cannot trust them for our safety. Nevertheless, we are told that we have to give up our gun rights. That is the current drumbeat from the liberals. And I have to look at this uh, article headline from the Daily Mail. San Bernardino killers illegally modified their rifles to carry more ammo to fire bullets. They made them full auto. They gave them larger magazines. And, and listen, they had a set of Christmas tree lights they used as bomb detonators. Why are we not seeing a call from the liberals to ban Christmas tree lights or to have background checks for Christmas trees before you can get them? I mean, that's the idiocy of all this, to make this about the tools rather than about the people that we need to be concerned about. Nevertheless, I have to go back and continue to say this. We do not want to have a situation where we give up our due process, our privacy, all of our rights to the government, including our right to protect ourselves. That is the one right that is absolutely essential. I'd much rather take my chances without any homeland security, without any militarized police, without any uh, armored personnel cars or SWAT teams. I'd rather take my chance and have a free country but maybe we can stop them from bringing the people into the country. One example of how dangerous this can be in terms of a false flag is a story that came from Judicial Watch. Five young Middle Eastern men were apprehended by U.S. Border Patrol this last week in an Arizona town. Two of them were carrying stainless steel cylinders and backpacks that alarmed the border officials uh, so much they called Homeland Security. Uh, maybe they got some of the guys that are on the terror watch list because what happened was when they got to the uh, point, FBI as well as Homeland Security, they took information on three of the people, but two of them they took absolutely no information on. Typically, what they do is they put them into the Border Patrol's E3 reporting system, collects, transmits biographic, biometric data, things like fingerprints and so forth. But the other two men were listed as, quote, unknown subjects. Uh, never heard of, said a Judicial Watch federal source. He said, in all my years, I've never seen that before. Now, later in the show, we're going to have a clip from today's radio show with Alex Jones talking to Steve Pachinik. And he's going to talk about some anomalies in the San Bernardino shooting. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Shane Steiner's involvement with InfoWarsLife.com truly happened in an organic way. I went to high school with Shane, his brother, knew his parents well, and he was visiting the office once, hadn't been to the office in years, and said, wow, I notice you're making and selling supplements. Do these really work? Because I've tried a lot of supplements as a uh, workout enthusiast, and I really think most of them are hype. And I said, here, take some home, try it. Well, a few weeks later, he came in blown away and said, I want to buy three boxes of this stuff to get my friends and family. It's simply amazing. He said, why does it work so well? And I said, listen, go to InfoWarsLife.com, watch the informational videos with Dr. Group and others. They understand how it all works. I know that it works for me. That's all I understand. The science, the facts, the research, people's testimonials, they're all on InfoWarsLife.com. You can check it out for yourself. I wanted to go to the gym. I wanted to push myself and work out harder. And that led to me being able to come out and do stuff like the barefooting and the surfing and stuff like that, which what I would have never done. I, I never would have done that uh, two years ago. Shane has said over and over again, more than just libido and energy, it made him want to get into the gym more. It made him want to get in better shape. And believe me, the Steiners have amazing genetics. Uh, his brother is a world champion steer wrestler. His dad, Bobby Steiner, is a famous world champion bull rider. They've got natural genetics. But when you added this to the mix, in Shane's own words, it took him to the next level. Shane noticed the mental clarity, 
Bobby was able to work out longer and gain muscle mass. He's already completely shredded. I gotta admit, for me, the biggest effect has been libido. Now, I've never claimed to have a body like some beach model, but back when I was 20, 22 years old and worked out every day, I looked great. But over the years, and being married, and having three kids, and working 18 hours a day, I gained basically 100 pounds. And it's been a long process of losing that weight in the last four years. But if you look at the photos and the videos of what I looked like four or five years ago versus today, the results are dramatic. I'd already cleaned up my diet, I was working out hard, but I'd only lost about 20 pounds. It was adding the other key ingredients from InfoWarsLife.com that helped me personally go to the next level and shed another 35 pounds. This has actually made me feel so good that uh, here late, about a year ago, I started training jujitsu and that kind of led to doing some boxing and kickboxing. I mean, it's, it's amazing that two years ago, I was on the couch and couldn't even tie my shoes. And now I'm training with MMA fighters and uh, just doing stuff that I never thought that I'd, I would be doing ever again. So Super Male Vitality has allowed me to do some amazing things and if it has those kind of effects for me i know that it will do great things for you so just try super male vitality i promise you you'll love it and finally let's look at anthony gucciardi infowars.com reporter he also works with dr group and others helping develop the newest most cutting edge high quality supplements Let's take a look at what happened when he tried to barefoot ski for the first time with the Steiners. And remember, we're not making fun of him. He had the will to get in the arena, and he's lost more than 10 pounds in the last few years of fat and gained more than 10 pounds of muscle. And Anthony chalks it up to super male vitality as well. Bottom line, folks, you want to discover the power of super male vitality and super female vitality for yourself by visiting InfoWarsLife.com today or by calling toll-free 888-253-3139. Joining me now is Leanne McAdoo. And Leanne, as I was talking about the attack on Pearl Harbor, of course, that was a literal attack. This attack in San Bernardino uh, may have been like Pearl Harbor. We're going to hear from Steve Pachinik later. He thinks it was even more of a false flag. But of course, there is another kind of attack, and that's the attack on our rights. Talk about that. We, we mentioned briefly about how Obama, and everybody knows he was coming after the Second Amendment. Mm -hmm. uh, this is something he's always coming after. But there's also attacks on the First Amendment as well. Right. And so this is, we saw this after 9-11, the exact same thing. They hate us for our freedoms, so we needed to take them away from you mm -hmm. in order to protect us. It's for our personal safety. And so uh, yesterday at his speech in the Oval Office, Obama was kind of giving everyone, placating the U.S., letting them know how he's responding. And he's basically saying he's uh, calling on Congress to tighten restrictions on visa-free travel to the U.S. He wants to restrict the public's access to encrypted communications that might defy surveillance, so no more tour and things like that. Uh, prohibit people on the so-called no-fly list um, from, from being able to purchase guns. Curbing Americans' access to powerful assault weapons. And then, of course, calling on Congress to give the green light for this undeclared war against ISIS. So it's just more of the same. In order to protect you, I'm going to need to take away your rights. And so we're seeing him double down on the Second Amendment there, as well as the First Amendment. Yes, and that's the thing I think is very interesting. We expect the Democrats to come after the Second Amendment. It's really amazing, though, to see Hillary, as well as Obama, coming after the First Amendment. And understand that the thing that separates America is our respect for individual rights mm -hmm. and the fact that these are things that transcend government. That government was created, according to the Declaration of Independence, government is created to protect those rights. It doesn't grant those rights to us. It doesn't have the freedom to proscribe those rights. Those are basic fundamental things. Freedom of speech, freedom of religion, the right to keep and bear arms and defend ourselves. Mm -hmm. And it looks very much like France, where they're wanting to block internet encryption, right. block Wi-Fi. They want to shut down Tor. They may do this by January. Mm. And, of course, they want to extend their emergency powers to February the 26th. Like under their state of emergency, they can have warrantless searches. Well, we, we have that, and they haven't really formally declared a, a state of emergency. Put people under house arrest, seal the country's border, ban demonstrations, so forth and so right. on. And so we see the same types of things being floated by Obama's attorney general as well when she yeah. talks about uh, hate speech. You know, I'm going to protect you Muslims against uh, people who say things against you. 
even as they're not able to say that this was uh, something that was attributable to Islam. So on the one right. hand, they, they won't say that this had anything to do with Islam, yet they will say, we're going to protect you. Uh, from this, right. <laughs> knowing that it has to do with it. Right, and, and now, of course, she's had to sort of clarify herself, meaning, of course, you know, we punish people for deeds, not their actions. Uh, but we'll get into that even a little bit more of how we're already starting to see how people's speech, if they're conservative or whatever, how they're actually being blamed mm -hmm. now for these mm -hmm. terror attacks. And, and of course, uh, you know, Hillary Clinton didn't waste any time blaming the GOP for these attacks as well. Um, but, you know, just like after 9-11, we see as long as there is a terror threat anywhere at any time, no perceived actual imminent threat, people will be more concerned with their personal safety rather than their personal liberties. And they know yes. this. This is why they, they never let a crisis go to waste. Homeland Security is introducing their new terror alert warning system. Now, the, the other older system uh, is being replaced because they've never had to use it because it depends upon a specific credible threat to the homeland, which there hasn't ever been this specific credible threat. Well, this new system has an intermediate threat level. It can be activated when there is no specific threat issued by the government, but there is supposed concern over copycat attacks. So they can just sort of raise this terror threat level whenever they want. As we know, they, they put that uh, terror threat out there right the night of the 2004 elections. Mm -hmm. So obviously that has a psychological impact on the United States. People are going to be persuaded to vote a certain way or think a certain yeah. way if they feel that their personal safety is that a threat? We know this is one of the, the oldest tactics in the book. Well, I think it's amazing people. when you go back and look at the uh, TSA, the lawsuit uh, by Corbett, the engineer. Uh, and as part of that lawsuit and part of his discovery, he was able to query the TSA on documents. They, my mistake, put up the unredacted answers. Mm -hmm. And we saw for a while, and we screenshotted it, you could see the redacted versus the unredacted. You could see that the TSA in 2011 said, there is no credible threat to airports or airplanes in 2011 as they were threatening to make Texas a no-fly zone hmm. if they couldn't put their hands on us and our children at the airport. Wow. Absolutely, totally ineffective, as I pointed out earlier in the segment, you know, how 95%, how, uh, I would say, some of the studies that I've seen from the Inspector General, they were 100% ineffective in mm -hmm. terms of catching deliberate uh, tests of the TSA. So right. these are the people we're supposed to have uh, protect us and constantly using the fear and the uncertainty to uh, hammer us to take away our freedom. Right, and let's not forget that they actually did have uh, some intel that there was an, an imminent threat uh, on attack on the United States, and they ignored that. And then, yes. of course, we all see, saw what happened on 9-11. Yes. Now, like we were talking about Lynch, she's had to come out and recalibrate her message on this hateful speech, saying, you know, of course, what I meant is that it's, you know, it's only speech that spurs action. Well, that now we have uh, a leftist journalist coming out of the New York Daily News. Uh, it's columnist Linda Stasi. Yes. Yeah. She is blaming one of the victims of the San Bernardino killers, um, saying that he was a hate filled. He, he was a hate, basically hate mongering because he would post these things on Facebook. And this is what prompted Farouk to carry out this massacre. She was saying that they had engaged in heated arguments about religion and politics. And so she suggested that. Uh, Thalassinos was equally responsible for this attack. Well, the difference is you can have a heated uh, discussion on religion or politics. You can have a heated discussion between Republicans and Democrats. They don't typically pull out uh, guns and knives and exactly. start cutting people's heads off, okay? Right, so or every, same thing nobody about gets religion. an argument with your family yeah. at Christmas dinner this year. <laughs> I mean, one of the differences, is, let's face it, one of the differences about Islam is you don't have, in Christianity, you don't have the Baptists and the Methodists uh, trying to kill each other mm -hmm. over their religious differences, okay? Right. That, that kind of thing happened 500 years ago, but it hasn't happened since then. Exactly. And, and yet, you know, just a slight tweaking of the, uh, of the, of the doctrine of, of going from one faction of Islam to another causes that to happen. Exactly. And so that's kind of the big issue with Lynch coming out saying, you know, we're going to prosecute people that have this speech that uh, incites his hatred because they're initially they were saying it could have been triggered by Christmas or, or his, <laughs> they were, his coworkers were making fun of his beard Things like that. So basically, you know, you can't have any of this language that can be seen as poking fun at a certain. You, you can't do political cartoons, things like right, that. I right. mean, this exactly. is this is the a United political States of cartoon America. is not provocation to kill somebody. Right. And having a discussion, a disagreement about religion or politics is not a provocation to kill people. Exactly. But when they say that, what they are doing is they're, they're using uh, uh, they're using political correctness to try to censor people. One of the things that I thought was very interesting was the fact that the NSA 
uh, there's, they're listening to everyone, right? But mm -hmm. now they're essentially throwing a temper tantrum saying, we're not 